This video is an introduction to vector data and how to work with it in R. Vector data includes all kinds of spatial data that are not represented by rasters. And this includes point data, line data, and polygon data. And we can see these three different kinds of here. Uh, Point data are represented by just a set of XY coordinates, one for each point, and are often used to represent things like sampling locations uh, or other uh, sort of points on a map. Lines uh, are composed of Again, a series of points with XY coordinates that we then call vertices, but those points are connected in order to form a line, and these can be used to represent things like roads or streams, uh, anything that is, is generally line-like in nature. And then finally, uh, we have polygons, which are shapes that are filled, and these are made up, again, of vertices, and we need at least three of them in this case. Uh, so a set of XY coordinates, and they are connected with lines in order, just like with lines, but then the last point on the polygon and the first point on the polygon are connected to one another, so making a closed shape, and these are used to represent things like geopolitical boundaries or site boundaries or uh, maps of things like soil conditions. Vector data come in a variety of different formats. Uh, one of the most common is uh, something called a shapefile. And shapefiles are actually multiple files that all have the same name but different extensions. And we can see an example of this uh, by looking uh, in our data folder and looking in this Harvard uh, section of our data folder. And one of the things that we have information on are some plot locations within Harvard Forest. And we can see that these are stored uh, in the set of files, harv underscore plots, uh, with four different file extensions. So those four files together represent a single shape file. To work with this kind of data, we're going to use the SF package. So let's go ahead and load that package by running library sf. And we'll also go ahead and load ggplot2 while we're here so that we have it for uh, graphing the vector data once we have loaded it. To load vector data using the SF package, we use the st underscore read function. So let's start by loading that plot data that we just looked at. So we'll call it plots underscore harv and assign it the output from st underscore read. And then we need to give it the path to a particular part of that shape file, a particular one of those files that make up the shape file. And so we're in that data directory and then the harv directory within there. And then we want harv underscore plots dot shp. And if we do this, it'll load all of the information from all of those files representing this single shape file. And if we do this, uh, we get some information about that shape file that we just loaded. Number one, it's a shape file. It has uh, seven features in it, and each feature here is one object. So either one point or one line or one polygon. 
uh, and it has two fields. And each field is a piece of information that is associated with that feature. And it also tells us that these are uh, point data, not line or polygon data, uh, and something about uh, the dimensions of this data or where it's located. If we go ahead and click on this to look at the object itself, we'll see uh, these two fields that we're talking about. One of them is a plot ID, so a numerical ID identifying the plot. Uh, and the other is plot type, and so that indicates that there are two different types of plots here, one called tower and one called distributed. And then the last field is where the spatial information is stored, and it's called a geometry to indicate that this is the spatial information. And since this is point data, all that it has in it is a pair of x, y coordinates, like we saw when we were looking at the diagram uh, at the beginning. And so this is basically a special kind of a data frame that contains information about the individual uh, features, but can be worked with uh, in spatial tools. We can plot SF vector data uh, using ggplot. And so we'll start like we did uh, when we were plotting rasters with just an empty ggplot call, no default values. And the geome for plotting SF data is geome underscore SF. And then we want to say data is equal to plots underscore harv. And like with raster data, because this is a spatial data set and there's some expectation for how it should be plotted by default, uh, we can actually run this without defining a mapping between the data uh, and the plot. And so if we run this, we'll see uh, that we have a series of coordinates here uh, plotted on latitude and longitudinal axes. We can also uh, color vector data based on the values in these fields. And so, for example, we have two different types of plots, tower and distributed, that are stored in that plot type field, right? And so, let's go ahead and color the points based on plot type. And so we do this in the same way that we would color points uh, when making a scatter plot. And so uh, we do this by defining a mapping, which is equal to our AES or aesthetic function. And then we say color is equal to plot type. And if we run this, we'll now get the same map as before, but now we have points that are colored based on the value in that plot type area. And so we can see which point belongs to which plot type. And this is a nice uh, map that we've started to build up, but just seeing points out in space with no other reference to compare them to uh, doesn't provide us uh, with a lot of context for what's going on here spatially. So let's go ahead and load another vector object that shows the boundaries of this portion, portion of Harvard Forest. I'm going to go ahead uh, and do that up here where I've loaded data before. We'll call this boundary underscore harv, because this is the boundary of the Harvard Forest site. 
and we'll assign it again the output of st underscore read in the data directory forward slash harv forward slash harv underscore and now it's boundary dot shp and we can run this and so now we can see uh, we've also got a boundary it only has one feature so that makes sense because it's just the boundary uh, that feature has eight fields associated with it and it's a, a multi polygon feature so let's just take a look at that real quick and so it's got a bunch of information coming from neon about the region that it occurs in what its name is what its abbreviation is and then we have this geometry which is a series of pairs of x and y coordinates uh, that are connected to one another by lines we can add this information to our existing map by adding another layer to our ggplot call so we'll add a plus and then it's another piece of data from the sf package another set of vector data so geom sf and then data is equal to uh, boundary underscore harv and if we run this at first it looks like we're only seeing the boundary uh, but we do have some indication that the plots are also being graphed and the reason we're not seeing the points is because the order in which we add these layers is really important because it plots the first layer first and then the second layer on top of that and so on uh, and so we want to actually add this boundary harv before we add the plots. So the boundary will go down as the base layer and then we'll put those plot points on top of it so that we can see them. And if we run this again, we'll now see uh, that we have both our boundary and our points within it. Uh, and the reason that this is a multi-polygon instead of just a regular polygon is there's actually this separate little polygon uh, over here to the side. If we need to plot layers on top of one another uh, that can't all be seen, that there's two big thick layers, uh, we can change the transparency of a layer so that we can see through it. Uh, and so if we went back to how we had things to start with, plotting the boundary layer after the points, which we wouldn't normally do in this case, uh, but for demonstration purposes, we can set the transparency like we've done uh, in other cases. Uh, and so let's say we set alpha equals to 0 0.5. Remember, alpha is how we set transparency. Uh, then we could run this and we'll be able to see through uh, that top layer into the underlying layers uh, most effectively. So that's a brief introduction to vector data and how to work with it in R. We'll be using the SF package to read in vector data using the SF package. We use st underscore read. And in the case of shape files, we provide it with uh, the path to the .shp part of the shape file. We can plot these using ggplot using the geome underscore sf geome. And we can combine uh, multiple vector layers together by adding one layer for each thing that we want to graph. The order in which we plot those is important because the first layer will be plotted first, the second layer will be plotted second. Uh, and that's how we build up a ggplot. Uh, vector map. 
How about now? Has the lagging stopped? Has the pixelation stopped? Has the world stopped?